just 18 built and six left and at the time it was twice the price of a Jaguar XJ 5.3 litre. Do you know what it is yet? Stay watching to find out. Welcome to Lot 76 Cars, my name is Simon and today I'm at the fabulous 2023 Lancaster Classic Motor Show. There's something like 300 uh, clubs in attendance and about 3,000 cars. So let's go and show you around some of the, uh, the best the show's got to offer. Now the Maguire's Club Showcase never ceases to disappoint and once again this year it's rolled out some of the best. Starting off with this absolutely lovely, very tastefully modified 1954 VW Beetle which was uh, I think the Volks World Show um, award winner. What a stunner that is isn't it? This 1995 Subaru Impreza is one of 745 units built to celebrate the 1995 championship win by Colin McRae and isn't it lovely? It's got some super details, obviously got the treble 5 uh, lettering on the side, those lovely gold wheels. It's a stunner isn't it, that one? Wow. So I'm here with Mark who owns this fabulous limited edition one of I think 745 Something cars. Like that, yeah, uh, yeah. You imported this one from Japan or? Um, it, I bought it, it was imported in 2006 I okay. believe. Um, I bought it three years ago. Right, and um, were you were you looking for one of these? Did you know how rare they were at the time or? I, yeah, I've always been a Colin McRae fan. Yeah, and, uh, you hasn't? know, And uh, you know, somebody of my era this you know Colin McRae was the man wasn't he so it's it's just ticked all the boxes oh fantastic and, and you were specifically looking for one of these for one of this series I wanted this f uh, 555 yeah but they're harder to get hold of I was gonna say how so. long did it take you to track it down you went to Japan you you got some to import it or? I actually bought it it spent most of its life um, around Scotland around Lanarkshire where Colin McRae oh, that's, lived actually that's quite a great connection isn't it yeah, yeah it is hence the the signature, he signed it on the end of the dashboard. Oh, has he? Um, wow. Which it was signed, uh, I believe, about two months before he died. Wow, that's so, fabulous. Uh, and I'll get, some, I'll cut some shots into that. It, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, you know, it's absolutely. <laughs> what a great car. Yeah. Fabulous. Thank you for telling us about it. Much appreciated. You're very welcome. Cheers, thank you. Now, the 970cc uh, Morris Mini Cooper S's were only built for about a year, and just a thousand built. And this apparently, is the last one off the production line isn't it a beauty i'm pretty sure i've not uh, seen it yet but i'm pretty sure that's surf blue um it is absolutely stunning condition here love those very small ventilated steel wheels rather than being converted to mini lights it's got that sort of brocade trim inside isn't that lovely i'd certainly find uh, find room for one of those so the um, Jaguar XJC was actually previewed in 1973 but didn't appear until 75. There were quite a lot of production issues trying to get that pillarless coupe design right. This is an absolutely stunning 77 car, a concourse winner, um, one of just six and a half thousand cars built. I'm not sure how many uh, are still left but uh, it is absolutely lovely in that sort of fawn off fawn colour, I'm not sure how you describe that. MG Rover actually put out the conversion work to the MG Maestro Turbo to uh, Tickford, i.e. Tickford of Aston Martin fame and I think uh, connected Aston Martin ownership. They built relatively few examples of these and the owner of this car tells me there's probably only maybe a hundred or so actually left on the road. It's a stunning, stunning example, this one. The level of attention to detail. It wasn't always like this, although it's got 50, 53,000 miles. Uh, the owner did show me some pictures of the car and quite honestly, he's had a huge amount of work to do to get it to this level. It's had a five year full restoration and doesn't it show? Glorious, glorious, isn't it? So this is a 1972 Type 2 Volkswagen conversion by Danbury, that uh, well-known uh, motorhome converter. And the great story of this one is the original owner lived around the corner from the current owner and he used to see this um, T2 on his way to and from school. Many years later he had the opportunity to buy the car, I guess when the guy got probably too old for driving, 
and isn't it a stunner? I can see why he cherishes and what a great story to have a relationship with a, a car in your life for so long, albeit from a distance. That is absolutely beautiful, isn't it? So this stunning two litre S Capri from 1983 is one of the last four speed cars and I'm going to have a chat with the owner Dan who's a channel subscriber so shout out to him. Um, it's absolutely stunning. It was owned by a former AA guy and the paint, believe it or not, the paint is original. Yes, it's never had paint work. It was rust proof for many times. I think Dan will tell us a bit more about it. There's the original purchase invoice there. The price this sum of £6,000 back in uh, 1983. Well, that's inflation for you, isn't it? Isn't that beautiful? And uh, quite a rare colour Imperial Red, apparently. I think it only ran for about a year. So uh, without further ado, let's have a chat with Dan about it. So I'm here with Daniel who owns this fabulous two litre Escapri, but there's there's a fabulous story behind this car, isn't there? Yeah, it um, belonged to a late friend of mine called Barry, who sadly passed away a couple of years ago. He had owned the car from 1990 when he bought it off the first owner, uh, Mr. Henry Adams, who he'd known for many years. They lived on the same estate. Um, and he had stored this car, and the last MOT on this car was in 1999 and he'd stored it in his garage, dry stored with a couple of like um, dust sheets over it for the last like 22 years. Wow, and, and you so tell me it's never had paint work, the paint's yeah, original. The paint is totally original, it's had this uh, full like detailed paint correction, ceramic coated, professionally detailed, yeah. Oh, it's a stunning. And then a very light recommissioning work done by a Capri specialist that I use in Lincolnshire. Yeah. Well, they've done a great job, it looks, it's yeah. a credit due to the the S to me is a bit overshadowed by the uh, the 2.8 I's, but uh, lo love the stripes on the side. Thanks for talking yeah, very, to us. Very, very rare uh, colour as well. It is, isn't yeah, it? Imperial, Imperial red. red. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. rare. For Smashing. a Capri anyway. Thank you very yeah. much. Appreciate that. Thank you. So from my favourite series of BMW 3 Series is this fabulous 2003 E46 M3. Um, it's a BMW Car Club of Great Britain award winning car and you can see why. Um, it is absolutely stunning. Love those wheels, um, those side vents. It looks great under lights, as you'd expect. It's on the Maguire stand, so it's immaculately prepared. What an absolutely lovely car. Walking around people here, trying not to get uh, tripped over. So yeah, the owner of this uh, MGA from 1955 really wanted a X-Works MG, and what he's built here is a tool room copy of the EX182 Le Mans entrant from I think 1955. It's got a rare cylinder head, it's got a lot of original parts on the car, although it is, I think copies may be a little bit un unfair to it, but it is absolutely true to the Le Mans cars, and it's well deserved in the Maguire showcase here today. Super. So I'm here with Mark who's going to tell us a bit more about this very special uh, so-called two-room copy of this uh, MGA Le Mans car. So let's hand over to him for a few words about it. 55 two-room copy of the Le Mans EX182. Um, it was all built with a group of us really. Um, Jimmy Cox is the original guy who built the cars, um, built the engine and also took the car to Le Mans in 55. Wow. Um, he and you had his support to build it? Absolutely. Well, who better, um, yeah, who better? We, we went to him to start with and asked him what his thoughts was and he thought a great idea. Um, then we found the, one of the original cylinder heads, there was only four of those ever made for the cut four cars. Um, and then it all built up from there. We then got the original diff, original screen, and that was copied. Um, built it all up, it's all aluminium body, like the original. And um, we're going along with Jim all the time to make sure everything was correct. Um, down to seats, aluminium floors, and the list goes on and on really. And how, how long did it take you to complete this? It was five years. Wow. What a, well, what a great car and uh, again, you, it may be called a tool room copy, but uh, to, to me it's a very effective recreation. Thank you. Thank you. All the way from Cork in Ireland is this Mercedes-Benz Club um, concourse winner, the 1994 E220 Coupe. So it's the later car, later car which got the uh, recessed grille, 
got the white indicator lamps and the different bumpers and quite a few updates. I actually drove a 320 of these a few months ago on the channel, so check out that video. Yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's a stunner. Looks pretty much an original car and looks absolutely stunning, doesn't it? Fabulous pillarless coupe, great cars to drive, I can tell you that, having had that experience. Um, and fabulous, fabulous coupe styling. Whichever way you look at it, it's a, it's a Bobby Dazzler, isn't it? So Magnum PI, your heart out. This is a 1989 Ferrari 328 GTS, another show winning car from the Ferrari Club. So you can imagine to win a Ferrari Club uh, show award must be going somewhere. And it's a beauty, isn't it? The, uh, the owner's just putting some last minute touches here. Uh, I mean, just look at the under bonnet area. You could, uh, if you dare, you could certainly eat your dinner off it. It is a stunner, isn't it? Probably from the era of Ferrari that I'd, uh, I'd really like to see. Oh, the owner's very kindly opened the engine bay. I'm going to step over here. Might get shot in a second. Wow. That is just as tidy. And that uh, 3200 uh, quarter valve engine. What a beauty. Let's have a look inside while we've got the opportunity before somebody escorts me out of the way. Oh. What an impression this must have made at the 1948 Earls Court Motor Show. It's a 1950 Jaguar XK120 Roadster. And while it looks like an original right-hand drive car, it's an unusual colour, isn't it? I'll, uh, I'll try and put on screen what that colour is because uh, it's just stunning. Lovely, huge steel wheels. Don't know if they're cross-ply tyres. They, they're probably the modern equivalents, but it's in lovely, lovely order. So the owner of this um, 1968 Triumph TR5, which is a concourse winner, wanted a restored car, but he couldn't quite find one in his budget. So he did the next best thing. He purchased new old stock parts. Now that search took him apparently eight years, and then obviously the time to rebuild the car. And didn't he do a stunning job with it? I think it's probably old English white. Uh, unusual wheels on it. I, I don't recognize those wheels. It's the two and a half litre, obviously in the TR5, wouldn't be the uh, PI, the injection came later, I think, with the uh, with the six. And it's lovely, isn't it? So back in the late 30s, a gentleman called Sidney Allard began producing these gentlemen's racers and produced cars from, um, I think, 36 right the way through to the late 50s. Predominantly, they were racing cars for the road. I think uh, Jay Leno certainly featured them on his channel. And fundamentally, they do what Carol Shelby did 20 years later, they put a large, in this case, I think early cars, three and a half litre Ford V8 Pilot side block engine in a very light roadster chassis. And then what they get is an incredible dragster, um, really rated for competition, sort of um, competition cars for the road somewhat. Um, the company eventually went on to produce um, converted uh, I think 105e Anglias um, when they stopped main car production and unfortunately just after that probably I think 66 uh, the company closed due to a, a catastrophic fire and ironically on the same night uh, Sidney Allard who established the company also passed away. So this Mercedes um, S-Class was formerly owned by uh, Dan's Benz the collector it's unusual because you see it's got the um, non-standard headlamps uh, these were used for the american in this case for the canadian market it's a canadian market car and what makes it unusual apart from the color and the left hand drive and it is a lovely lovely color is the fact that yeah wait for it it is a turbo diesel what a stunner isn't it celebrating an anniversary of 60 years this year is this fabulous W100 Mercedes Grosser owned by some incredibly famous people. Um, this one was owned by Kofi Annan, UN Secretary General for a while. Some great features, lots and lots of hydraulically operated features on the car way before electrification was a thing. In fact, the three-pointed star is 20% bigger than normal, simply to be not dwarfed by the size of the car. Three of the four Beatles had them. I think only um, uh, Paul McCartney didn't. Absolutely, absolutely immense in every possible way. So Argentinian 
um, Alessandro de Tomaso was credited with producing some fabulous supercars using the recipe of a normally a, um, a US sourced engine Ford often Ford in a uh, relatively light chassis this is the 5.7 litre yeah 5.7 litre 351c v8 what a stunning car next to it we've got i think one uh, one of the prettiest cars he produced which is actually the uh, mangusta now i think that name was used by Cravali later on probably some connections but this particular orange one for some reason is called kylie well hello kylie you should certainly be doing the locomotion in that car won't you so part of an arrangement with Ford is this so-called De Tomaso Pantera push button. So this is one of the first 75 cars that Ford imported. They were hand built in Italy and the reason that they are called push button, wait for it, is they're distinguished by this push button door handle. This is an absolutely stunning car. I think this one's been restored. Isn't it lovely? Proudly displaying its badge. I guess as part of that Ford arrangement powered by Ford it's a stunner isn't it I'm getting towards the end of the Pantera story this is a 1983 kites the penultimate kites the Pantera GT5 launched in 1965 and built on relatively simple mini underpinnings is this mini Marcos I think just 1300 of these were made this one it's difficult to to describe to you the proportions i guess the thing that would give it away is those tiny wheels um we've got this is obviously all set up to be uh racing inboard uh brake lines and huge uh, much bigger tank inboard tank there what an absolutely stunning looking car isn't it from its tortoise emblem to its fabulously Italian styled touring body is this Gordon Keeble. These are one of my favorite cars. They built just 99 of these officially. In fact, they did have some components left and went on to, to build a, a few more under different ownership. Um, in actual fact, the company uh, went broke because one of its suppliers had a strike and starved them of components and they couldn't get off, uh, couldn't get finished cars out of the factory or couldn't finish them. And unfortunately, the, the company folded despite having a relatively full uh, order. But what a fabulous car and a, an immense survival rate. I think maybe 95% of these cars survive talking to owners. So phased out after just three years of production is the Alpha 90 based on our Feta uh, mechanicals and underpinnings. It didn't actually sell very well. Unfortunately, it's got a beautiful two and a half litre Busso V6 engine and apparently this is one of just three cars left uh, on the road in the UK which is absolutely incredible isn't it now these are getting to particularly rare aren't they the Alpha 145 and 146 the 146 being the five door version replaced the Alpha 33 um, really quite unusual to see these this sort of uh, unusual bread van styling sort of polo s styling that strange uh, rear window arrangement there that uh, they are it's really great to see these Matt on Furious driving has got one of these and I can see why he likes it so much dare to be different eh this fabulous mid-end creation is a Lotus Europa twin cam from 1971 weighing a scarcely unbelievable 710 kilos with a 105 brake horsepower that's not a bad power to weight combination is it now the fun fact on this car it was designed by the guy who also designed, wait for it, the Black & Decker workmate. Yeah, absolutely true. So founded by Robert Yankel, um, Panther Westwinds from 72 to 1980 produced some absolutely incredible cars. This is a J72, which is a, a recreation of a Jaguar SS model. Or in fact, it will be the Swallow sidecar um, company's Jaguar at that stage when they were still called SS Motors and the fun fact on this one is Richard Burton actually gave one of these to um, Elizabeth Taylor that was uh, that was generous wasn't it well the main volume cars for the brand was the Panther Lima a uh, later which became one to be called the Callista a roadster that has got I think power from a 2.3 litre Vauxhall engine if I'm right 
The doors, do you recognise the doors? Yeah, I think they're off a, uh, a midget. I think they're uh, midget doors. Quite a tight cockpit in there. This one's got a lovely Castrol um, logo and Blyderstein, Blyderstein, even power. So uh, it's certainly been uh, tickled a bit under the bonnet, hasn't it? Now this is truly a special car. It is a Pantherio and basically used as its base a Triumph Dolomite but believe it or not the price it was nearly £10,000 at the same time a 5.3 litre XJ was about seven and a half yeah so not surprisingly only sold in relatively low numbers just 33 of these cars were produced I've never seen one of these I don't think ever but uh, I have now and so have you so I'm here with Peter who's going to tell us about this uh, Panther Rio. It'd be too easy to walk past this without a second look, but it's quite a special car, built in small numbers. Peter, tell us about what's so special about these. The car was made between 76 and 77. Uh, it's listed as they made 36. They only actually made 18 because Panthers used every other serial number. So they ah, made 18 okay. of these. That's interesting. It was made for the fuel crisis in 76 uh, when uh, the price of oil rocketed. Panthers caught on to the fact that there may be a market for a small car that a Rolls-Royce buyer would buy okay. so it didn't look too ostentatious and was more economical. Okay. So it was, it was Incon inconspicuous consumption. It was time the Silver it, Shadow. Oh, ah, okay, customer. right, right. Uh, Betty Davis uh, had one. Uh, Jimmy oh. Grease, the football player, had one. Wow. Uh, it's based on a Triumph Dolomite. There right. were two types of Dolomite, the Dolomite and the Sprint. This particular one is the second from last car made. It's based on the Sprint. So it's got a bit more power, 16 valve more. head. That's yeah. right. Yeah. It's, it's called, this one's called the Rio Especial. The reason they didn't sell so many was the price. Uh, this particular car has got electric windows, air conditioning, which a, a Dolomite did not have. But this was uh, priced at around £11,000 in okay. 19, January the 1st, 77. You, it was almost twice the price of an XJ6. Wow, that's incredible. Uh, which made it... Um, difficult to sell. The body itself is aluminium. Right. So they took off all the panels of the uh, Dolomite and panelled it. It's slightly longer, it's a couple of inches longer wow, than the Dolomite. Wow, okay. The roof, everything is different. Uh, they took away the Dolomite, the overhang over the rear roof. Right. The car, this is particularly one's an automatic. Right. Um, it drives lovely. I've been all over in, it's only done 37,000 miles, I've been all over in it. I've had it about seven years. When I first got it, it right. was extremely reliable in typical Triumph yeah. Dolomite fashion. But I've had everything sorted out on it. It's a reliable little car. It creates a lot of interest because the, normally what people say is, uh, what is it? Uh, yeah. And uh, people don't know what the car is. But the, the, around, we believe there's six left. Six out of a production run, what 18. you say? Of 18. 18, there's six left. Right, okay. And the 33 is what, the total? No, no they were only made 18. Oh, they only made 18, only in made fact. 18. Okay, okay. Um, because what that, happened yeah. was the Panthers used every other serial number. Right, okay. So, so hence the confusion. Hence the confusion. So officially they made 36, but they didn't. They only made... Uh, Panthers were very good at making things look a lot better than they're actually... Uh, <laughs> well, well okay. a brilliant salesperson. Yes, Absolutely it sounds salesperson. like it, yeah. And uh, the way you sold these... Um, the Panther 6 wheel car, the Panther 6, yes. is in Saudi Arabia, the original only made one. Okay. And when he sold them the Panther 6, he also sold them a Rio. Okay. And the Rio has never been used. It's brand new. It sits in Saudi Arabia. Wow. And I've been over and seen it and the Panther 6. Okay. Because uh, I tried to buy them. But it's, um, uh, but you, you really, this is the best condition Rio outside of the one in Saudi yeah, Arabia. Yeah, I can believe it. I'll um, get some shots. I'll cut in some shots, guys, of the inside because it's really different. You wouldn't think you were sat in a... And a Triumph Dolomite base car, so we'll, we'll certainly it's very leather different. Leather interior, wheels and uh, carpets, uh, English uh, cloth right. headlining, uh, four cigarette lighters, because the market was... <laughs> four big, cigarette lighters, was target that's how times have changed, isn't it? Yeah. It is, and the Deville's got five, but it's, it's got four cigarette lighters. Uh, it's a funny car, but the downside of the car uh, is it's based on a Triumph Dolomite. But if you go around the car, you can see where all the bits come from. Right. Uh, you've got Mark 1 Jaguar, Jaguar limousine, electric window switches, Mark 1 Granada front lights, TR6 rear lights. If you go around it, it's bits from everything. He's That's gone around all the parts. That's incredible, isn't it? Um, the the uh, mirror, uh, the Jaguar ashtrays. But the car itself, it's a very... It's just a different, it's something completely different. There's not another one at the show and you'll probably never ever see it. No, no, absolutely. Well, thank you for telling us. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks again. Cheers. So with four-wheel drive, ABS brakes and a Sierra Cosworth powertrain, this is the very rare, and I can't stress how rare this is, Panther Solo. These were absolutely lauded by the press at the time. Fantastic cars, but never actually sold. 
and in actual fact despite their best efforts just 20 were built 12 of these were actually sold um, worldwide an incredible car i think there's probably about eight of them in the uk the lights although i, I can't capture it on film because they're closed they just um they're not pop-up lights but i think those shutters go back and you've got the sierra cosworth powertrain it's a bit of a part spin special in there but you combine all of these elements together and you've truly got an incredibly incredibly special supercar really great to see one of these here today you're unlikely to see one of these in the uh, in the flesh very often and you recognize the back lights go on sierra mark one aren't they so fresh from restoration is the beast which is a creation i think the second owner of this was john dodd who uh, sadly passed away uh, not so not so long ago um it's got wait for it a 27 liter rolls royce aero engine under the bonnet merlin aero engine now at one time there was a court case involving john dodd where the rolls royce made him take the grill off it appears to have that rolls royce grill back on again well it's got a it's got a rolls royce engine hasn't it so uh I suppose technically speaking it still is a Rolls Royce but attracting lots of attention here today. Absolutely stunning to look at is this Lancia Aurelia GT from 1954. Wow what cars Lancia were turning out back in the day. Now unusually it is an Italian car but it's right hand drive. So apparently the premium cars in Italy at that time right hand drive was considered the thing to have even though the country had uh, driving on the other side of the road. Very strange but what an absolutely fabulous car that is that stunning coupe body what is not to like about that that's beautiful looking like it's just come off the uh, east african safari rally is this uh, lancia 032 an incredibly successful rally winning car i think the last non all-wheel drive car to win the championship maybe i'm wrong i'm not sure eventually succeeded by the delta um it does share the central tub with the um, monte carlo but that's about all or despite the fact it looks uh, it looks similar so this rather special xjc it belongs to tom lentil so tom lentil has his own channel on youtube so give him a follow and they've done a full resto mod on this absolutely stunning installation of the uh, supercharged engine under the bonnet done lots of work it was bought i think painted but his mechanical changes we're going to talk to tom in a second and just find out a bit more about this car but it's absolutely beautiful but and it's also been converted to a manual as well so uh, what an incredible piece of work that one is so uh, without further ado let's have a chat with tom so I'm here with uh, Tom Lentil, who's built this fabulous um, XJC, but with a difference. Tom, tell us what you've done to this, because it's lots of work's been done to it, hasn't it? We we put a lot of time and effort into this car. So um, when I first bought it, I just bought it as a standard 4.2 XJ Coupe, uh, auto gearbox, but nice paintwork, reasonable interior, and I wanted to do a mechanical resto mod. So took it back to the workshop, ripped all of the axles out gearbox wow. engine we repainted the engine bay and then put a fully rebuilt xjr engine out of a 300 um, with a five speed 290 get track gearbox so and then we did a few little mods to the engine we put it on a standalone engine management system bespoke exhaust oh, what else have we done um, it dynoed a 371 brake but yeah you were quite pleased with that i saw in the video it was oh. a bit more than you anticipated wasn't it I, I, brake horsepower wise I thought we'd get between 360 and 380 so right. we were bang on with that but it was the 639 newton meters of torque that we got that shocked me yeah. um, so the power plant works really well and it's, it, it's I'm really really pleased with that and drivability is fine because we've got we've got a outboard disc late XJS outboard disc rear axle uh, front axle is just pretty much standard XJS or XJ series 1, 2, 3 they're pretty much all the same but we put um, four pop Brembo calipers on there and I've got um, uh, rotors with um, bells on for discs. Some nice pads in there. It's got, it's got everything that, um, you know, so, so the car stops. Um, I've got my own spring set up on there with um, gas adjustable dampers so it goes around corners. But um, yeah, so, but I just wanted to do this and do something nice. So I'm really, you know, we've nailed it. And the whole point of this car was to 
just show off what we can do with a coupe you know and I wanted to I wanted to build a coupe with a straight six engine in it which was quicker lighter and better than a v12 fabulous because the V12s are really expensive to restore and do. Yeah, and problematic. I saw the issues yeah, that Harry Metcalf had with his. Exactly, yeah, yeah. That's exactly it. And I just wanted to do something that was more cost effective than that uh, and equally as good. Fabulous. So, well, thanks for telling us about it, Tom. No, Thank you very much. No, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Designed by Chris Bangle, who went on to work for BMW, is this Fiat, Fiat Coupe. Maybe works better than some of the designs he had with BMW. This broom yellow example looks absolutely lovely. Got a got a colour keyed parts here. Got those uh, obviously very distinctive slashes in the in the side, which makes the car look the way it does. The uh, 16 valve and uh, 16 valve turbo cars. There appears to have a growing interest for these car now. That one looks really nice in in broom yellow. So just over a thousand of these uh, Fiat Strada 105 TCs were imported into the country. Not many survived, certainly not many in this condition. This is in stunning condition. And the interesting thing is, this car has been in the same ownership since new. It's absolutely immaculate. It benefited from, I think, some rust proofing when it was new. And my word, that's really had a benefit. So we're gonna have a chat with the owner now. And he's gonna tell us, a bit more about his long-term ownership of this absolutely superb car. So Steve's going to tell us about this 105 TC Strada, a really rare one, but Steve, you've had it from new, yes. from 1982. Yes. Tell us, tell us the story. Uh, the story goes that um, I was working for Fiat um, in 1982 and I needed a car and the cars that I was looking at was the X19 or, okay, yeah, good choice. Or the 105 TC. Now, because I worked for the garage, which was Auto Yachts of Gillingham, because I worked there, um, obviously it made sense, obviously, to buy a Fiat. Yeah. But because I was their electrician, I obviously had two toolboxes. Ah, and it okay. was totally Hence the X19 was. The, the X19 yeah, would have been totally that. impractical. Yes. So uh, on the 14th of August 1982, I actually drove this very car out of the showroom. Wow. And uh, It's so well preserved, there can't be many like, like this left. There can't be many left full stop, can there? Well, there are, my understanding is that there was about 1,200 or just under 1,200 of these uh, Mark 1s, which is what this is, right. uh, between 1981 and 82. Um, 1,200 sold? 1,200 imported wow. into the UK. Okay. Okay. Uh, so yes, I'm guessing they would have all, yeah, all yeah, would, yeah, would have been yeah. sold. Um, it was our garage's policy um, at that time, because of the issue that Lancia had, that every single Fiat and Lancia that we sold, uh, they were Prilligarded. Oh, okay. And Prilligard is uh, a form of Zybart. Okay but the Krilligard is not so um, intrusive as, as the Zybart when you lifted the bonnet of a car right. that was Zybarted, it, it was black everywhere. This was put, uh, the, the gentleman came along and he drilled holes in various parts of the car, right? Uh, and he filled it with, with this Krilligard. Now, because I worked at the garage, uh, part of my job, when the gentleman turned up, he was dressed like Darth Vader in this, <laughs> in this suit. Part of my job was to drive the cars onto the um, onto the ramp, yes. uh, whereupon he would jack the cars up and do what he had to do. When he'd finished, I'd obviously replace it with the next one that needed doing. Right. When he turned up uh, about a week before I bought this one, I told him that I was buying this one, and uh, he said he'd look after me. And that instead of getting the usual 45 minute treatment, this had best part of double that, so there is no question that that certainly <laughs> helped. It has, it's protected it, hasn't yeah, it? Well, it's, it has. it's a stunning car, an original, what, 58,120 miles, it says on the clock. Yep. It's, it's, a, it's a credit duty, not modified in any way, it looks pretty, pretty standard in here, yeah? Yes, uh, what you see is pretty much uh, how it came out of the factory. The only one modification that I did that was non-Fiat was the glass sunroof. Um, okay. And that I had put in uh, by a specialist just up the road from the garage I worked in. The other things I've done, uh, the near side door mirror, but these are all Fiat uh, options that I put on myself. Oh, well. The seat covers you see in the back, yes. they're Fiat. Um, wow. There are two that go on the front, 
I've taken them off so that people can see yes. that the material is is as it was in 1982. Well, thank thank you for telling us about it. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay. And this lovely uh, Fiat uh, Seicento belongs to um, Joe Miller of Miller's Corner. Nice to see that here. I think it's been on a trip around the Nurburgring. It's quite a well-travelled car. With all-round disc brakes and coil suspension, this Fiat 124A was quite innovative when it was introduced back in 1966. And apparently, the car of choice for Italian army colonels. Well, I can't comment about that, but uh, it certainly had a long lifespan, didn't it? The brainchild of a Welsh butcher and a German prisoner of war that never returned home is the Gilben. Now this is the Gilben Invader, it's a later car, I think the earlier cars were the Gilben uh, Genie. Um, absolutely fantastic cars, built often with Ford mechanicals. Unfortunately the company went bust in uh, the mid 70s due to the introduction of uh, VAT and I think you've got the oil crisis at the same time having an impact and in fact there was a long wheelbase version of this car ready to go and to be debuted at the Earl's Court show and unfortunately it never saw the light of day and just one of those units exists but uh, great to see that here today. So Ginetta was established by the four Carmad War Club brothers. The name I think coming from the uh, name of one of the girlfriends of the brothers or that's what I read anyway. Um, this is the G15 which is the rear imp engined car that they produced. Um, fabulous that this company still exists. It's actually still around. It's celebrating its 65th anniversary. I was lucky enough to go to the um, 65th anniversary event at Silverstone this year and film that so check out that video on the channel. So the Rochdale Olympic took his name from the town where it was produced and I think the Olympics in 1960 400 were produced. Um, you could build them at home saving I think car tax and um, it used Riley or Morris minor mechanicals believe it or not. I think this one's been uprated with uh, MGB mechanicals. It's a stunner isn't it? I think the owner uh, the of the company did have a Porsche 356 because I think the styling influence is in there really rare to see these you know out of 400 produced how many survived not many I guess built from a factory in uh, lovely Chalfont St Giles is the Fairthought built from uh, the 50s I think into the early 70s this is based on the Ford 1600 crossflow engine obviously the uh, cabrio that they've got great to see that here today and reminiscent of so many of those small sports car marks some that you built at home some that were factory built that just wouldn't exist today so this series 2a 1968 Land Rover has a bit of a story so the first owner was involved in a bit of an accident quite a serious accident where uh, having just filled the vehicle up with petrol he managed to turn it over and uh, Having just lit a cigarette, that wasn't the best situation to be in. Happily, he escaped. But the company that recovered him actually then took over ownership of the Land Rover and put a crane on the back and then used it for recoveries. Wow. That's, uh, it's got the um, original crane, the Frost Harvey Cross crane has been uh, actually added back onto it. And it's a proper working vehicle, not restored, but looks great. What a great story. So thanks again for joining me on Lot 76 Cars at the 2023 Lancaster Classic Motor Show. It's been a great show, some wonderful cars here today. Good to have a chat with some of the owners. Um, so please like, share, subscribe, turn on notifications so to be informed when my next video is live. And once again, thanks for watching.